Sign up to Council's disaster and weather event warning system. Receive alerts about emergency news, severe weather events and other public safety alerts via SMS or email. Registering to the disaster messaging system is free. To register, visit Gladstone Regional Council's Region Watch website and click on the Register for Warnings button. Get ready, Gladstone. Take the steps to protect what's most important to you. Let's be better prepared and protected for emergencies and disasters.
Well, today we announced the uh, beneficiaries for the 2021 Santos GLNG Mayor's Charity Ball, and I'm very pleased. Well, good morning. The time being 9am, I declare open the general meeting for the Gladstone Regional Council for the 6th of April 2021. Uh, there's no apologies. However, we have Councillor O'Grady on teams. Good morning, Councillor O'Grady. Councillors, I move to the first item on the agenda, which is messages of condolence. Do we have any messages of condolence? No messages of condolence. Um, the next item on the agenda is prior notifications of MPIs and conflicts of interest, and we have a few. So I'll start with Councillor Trevor. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I have three conflicts of interest. The first conflict of interest being as follows. I, Councillor Chris Trevor, advise that in agenda item G slash 4.2, development application 28 slash 2020 for a material change of use of premises for a retirement facility on land at lot 300. Uh, Ocapulco Circuit, Agnes Water. I have a declarable, declarable conflict of interest as I am a director, along with my wife, Colleen Trevor, of Warrabal Proprietary Limited as trustee, which owns a 50% share in development land at lot 207 Round Hill Road. Agnes Water, which is in very close proximity to the subject land of this development application. As a result of my conflict of interest, I will leave the meeting room while this matter is considered and voted on. The second conflict of interest is as follows. I, Councillor Chris Trevor, advise that in agenda item G 4.5, Community Investment Program, Regional Enhancement Fund, Jumpstart City Heart, I have a declarable conflict of interest as I am the owner of the legal practice Chris Trevor & Associates that operates at 62 Gundoon Street, Gladstone, that is located in the City Heart. As a result of my conflict of interest, I will leave the room while the matter is considered and voted on. The third conflict of interest is as follows. I, Councillor Chris Trevor, advise that in agenda item G slash 4.11 PSA 141-21, supply and delivery of filters, I have a prescribed conflict of interest as my son, Guy Jennings, is a business unit manager at Komatsu who have, who have tended for this PSA. As a result of my conflict of interest, I will leave the meeting room while the matter is considered and voted on. Thank you, Councillor Trevor. No resolution is required as Councillor Trevor has elected to leave the room on all occasions. Over to you, Councillor O'Grady. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I have um, one conflict and advise that agenda item G 4.2, development application 28-2020, uh, material change of use of premises for a retirement village on the land of lot three, um, 300 Acapulco, um Circuit Agnes Water. I have a declarable conflict of in, as in, sorry, a declarable conflict of interest as my brother John Murgard owns a block at 2715 Grand Hill Road, Agnes Water. I don't believe this interest is any greater than any other councillor, and that would not hinder me making a decision in the public interest of the said item. I propose to stay in the room if councillors allow me. Thank you, Councillor O'Grady. What's required here, councillors, is a resolution on whether Councillor O'Grady will stay in the room or, or leave the room. So if I feel free to ask questions or can I have a mover for either Councillor O'Grady to remain in the room or to leave, please? Councillor Branthwaite. Yeah, I'd like to move that Councillor O'Grady remain in the room. Thank you, Councillor Branthwaite. Seconded by Councillor Churchill. Is that a question? Seconded Councillor Churchill. Any questions? I'll put the motion. Sorry, Councillor Muscat. Um, thank you, um, Mr Mayor. Uh, just, um, Ed, see the, your brother's property, I mean, how is this going to be, how, how is the, the development going to be affect, affecting your brother's business? Um, he owns the sec, uh, third 40-acre um, block on the way out of Agnes, so it could be developed at some stage, but I don't know whether, you know, when he's developing or... So, okay, like anyone else that could own a blog anywhere in the vicinity, really. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor O'Grady. Is moved by Councillor Branthwaite, seconded by Councillor Churchill. Councillor O'Grady remain in the room. I'll put the motion all in favour. Motion's carried. Councillor O'Grady remain in the room. Over to you, Councillor Churchill. 
Yeah, thank you for that, uh, Mayor Matt. I've got three uh, declarable conflicts of interest. First one, I, uh, Council Glen Churchill, advise that in agenda item G4.5, Community Investment Program, Regional Enhancement Fund, Jumpstart City Heart, I have a declarable conflict of interest as I have previously reported publicly that I've been associated with the Gladstone Area Promotion Development Limited GAPDL for 15 years as a member as the Chief Executive Officer and on board of the Directors from 2000 to 2015. However, I don't believe my interest will affect my ability to participate and vote in this decision in the public interest, and accordingly I would uh, stay in the Chambers subject to the will of my peers. Thank you, Councillor Churchill. Um, questions, Councillors, or is someone happy to move? Uh, Councillor Churchill, remain or leave the room, please. Councillor... So Brent, wait. Yeah, I'd like to move that uh, Councillor Churchill remain in the room. Thank you. Second of that motion, please. Thank you, Councillor Cameron. Any further discussion? I put the motion moved by Councillor Brent, by second Councillor Cameron, that Councillor Churchill remain in the room. All in favour? Motion carried. Thank, Thank you for that. My second one, uh, I, Councillor Glenn Churchill, advise that in agenda item G4.6, Community Investment Program, Community Celebration Fund Impact Event, I have a declarable conflict of interest as I have previously declared that I am an honorary volunteer member and percussion tutor and performer with the Gladstone Thistle Pipes and Drums who appear annually and perform at the Mount Larkham Show for which the band does receive a minor fee payment. However, as I am a volunteer and receive no remuneration, I don't believe my private interest will affect my ability to participate and vote on this decision in the public interest and accordingly, and with respect to the decision uh, of the meeting, I would like to stay in the chamber subject to the will of my peers. Thank you, Councillor Churchill. Questions or a mover for Councillor Churchill to remain or leave the room, please? Uh, Mr Cameron. Yes, I would move that uh, Councillor Churchill remain in the room for the agenda item. Thank you, Councillor Cameron. Seconder, please. Thank you, Councillor Branthwaite. No further discussion? Move Councillor Cameron, second, and Councillor Branthwaite. Sorry, Councillor Goodluck has a question. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Sorry, Councillor Churchill, just confirm you're not um, an executive of the of the Pipe Thistle Band or just just a member and participating member, yeah? Yeah, no, I'm just an honorary uh, member, volunteer, tutor and performer and uh, not a member of the executive. Thank you. Okay, no further questions. Have a mover and a second. All in favour? Carried. Councillor Churchill will remain in the room and you have one final item you'd like to discuss. Yeah, my third and final one, I, Councillor Glenn Churchill, advise that in agenda item G4.8, Community Investment Program, Community Celebration Fund, Ignite event, uh, I have a declarable conflict of interest as my wife, Sue Churchill, is the current honorary president of Integrate Queensland Incorporated. And under this particular circumstance and the recommended project funding, unless it's separated from the other recommended projects to be funded, I, I will leave the meeting room while the matter is considered and voted on. So at this particular stage, uh, Mayor Matt, uh, indicating that if that particular line item was to be separated from the rest of the agenda uh, in the recommendation, uh, that I could stay for the other uh, matters. However, if it's uh, decided by my peers that it can remain with all the recommendations and appropriately, I'll remove myself from the meeting room. Thanks, Councillor Churchill. I'll deal with the... Um, oh, sorry, you'll have to leave regardless. I got you. Um, so do you want to see if we can split the motion? Um, I'll put that to the community council now. Um, Councillor Trevor, your question, or you'd like to move? Sorry, Mayor, I'm happy to move accordingly. You move that we split the item. Move Councillor Trevor, second it. Councillor Goodluck, for a question? Thank you, any further questions? I'll put the motion all in favour. Thank you, that's carried. When that item is raised, I will split the item and Councillor Churchill will remain, remain in the room for the first part, then leave when we vote on the second part. Over to you, Councillor Goodluck. Thanks, Mayor Matt. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I, Councillor Khan, good luck, advise on an agenda item for, uh, G slash 4.6 Community Investment Program Community Celebration Fund Impact Event. I have a prescribed 
conflict of interest in accordance with section 150 EI of the Queensland Local Government Act 2009 and as I am the President of the Boyne Tanham Arts Business and Community Association Inc and the BTABC has applied for the grant uh, of the Under the Trees Music Festival and may potentially enter into a contract with Council so I will leave the meeting for this agenda item. Thank you, Councillor Goodluck. Any further conflicts of interest the Council would like to raise? Councillor Branthwaite. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I, one sort of come to my attention just now with the, the likes of the GAPDL um, on agenda item 4.5. I am a, uh, an, a member of, of GAPDL and I'm also they handle some bookings for me um, on, on an occasional basis. And I'm just wondering whether this is a, uh, a uh, declarable conflict of interest would it cover that. Thank you. I'll check with um, Brooke or the CEO. Sorry, just to confirm, Councillor Branthwaite, when you say handle bookings, is that for a private business of your own? Yes, it is for my tour company. I'd just like to open the agenda item first quickly. Meh. Um, I don't believe that this would be a conflict of interest on the basis that the recommended funding is in relation to Fashion Friday, and so unless that is going to impact on your private business, then I don't, I'd consider it a separate matter. Thank you. Thank you. No, so, sorry. Do I, do I still, now the conflict's been raised, do I still need to move, second that he stay in the room? Thank you. Can I have a move up? Thank you, Councillor Churchill, second to Councillor Muscat, that Councillor Branthwaite remain in the room. All in favour? It's carried. Thank you. And was there... Councillor Hanson? Yes, yeah, got a couple of little notifications. Uh, item G.4.5, Jumpstart City Heart. I'm a council appointed member of the GAPDL board, but uh, feel that I, I'm able to stay in on that. And there is another one that people... Can I just deal with that one first? There's no conflict there because no. you're appointed um, by council to that we board. We just have to mention it, though. No, I, I don't, to mention yeah, it. Happy to mention it, but I don't need a mover or a seconder. And in that same item, uh, I no longer have a conflict of interest in anything in Gundoon Street because both of my business sold prior to Easter. So if anybody brings it up again, I haven't got anything in Gundoon Street, uh, Chris Trevor, uh, Mr Trevor. <laughs> um, and also item G.4.8, Community Celebration Fund. I am a patron of the Gladstone Tennis and Squash Association, but I don't think that uh, is a conflict uh, as well. You Just to let you know. Thank you, Councillor Hanson. No conflict there either. Being a patron is not considered a conflict, uh, therefore no vote is required on that item either. No further conflicts? Excellent. This will be challenging when we get through them all. Alrighty, uh, we'll move to the next item on the agenda, which is the Mayor's statement on current issues. And I want to start by going back a few weeks to March 17, which was a great day for the Gladstone region with the historic signing of a memorandum of understanding for Gladstone H2 ecosystem. Sumitomo Australia, Australian Gas Networks Gladstone as part of the Australian Gas Infrastructure Group, Gladstone Regional Council, Gladstone Ports Corporation and Central Queensland University have joined forces to explore opportunities to develop a hydrogen ecosystem in Gladstone. The ecosystem will initially pursue domestic offtake and mobility solutions before moving to enable large export scale. The MOU sets out a three-phase plan commencing this year with a key end goal by 2030 to see hydrogen exported from Gladstone to the world. Australia is uniquely positioned to be a world-class hydrogen energy exporter and generator. With our world-class port here in Gladstone and the ability for the region to develop an abundance of clean energy, Gladstone is well positioned to be Australia's leading hydrogen exporter by 2030. Hydrogen Park Gladstone is an important stepping stone to achieving this vision. The project aims to blend up to 10% hydrogen into Gladstone's entire existing gas network with plans to be fully operational next year. Central Queensland University will also play an active role in rapidly developing its research expertise and training capability in both hydrogen and advanced manufacturing. Can I thank the Minister for Energy, Renewables and Hydrogen, Mick Debrenny, Assistant Minister Lance McCullum, and our local MP, Glenn Butcher, Minister for Manufacturing and Regional Development for attending. It was a significant day for the Gladstone region and the MOU signed right here at the Gladstone Entertainment Convention Centre. 
Well, you would have to have been living under a rock if you didn't know that it was a yacht race on the weekend and a harbour festival and Easter in Gladstone. Um, can I do a big shout out to the uh, volunteers, the hardworking volunteers at Gladstone Festivals and Events for making sure our local Harbour Festival continued a COVID safe event and the team did an amazing job. So well done to you, Raymond, and all your volunteers. There's so many of them, can't name them all. But, you know, it was good to see after the event was cancelled last year, it continued this year. Obviously, unfortunately, we had to postpone events in the Brisbane to Gladstone Village, but those events will take place later on in the year. So I'm not sure how, whether it'll be a, a yachtsman's long lunch or, um, or an Easter in July or what it will be, but those events will take place later in the year. And um, also to Selesh and the team at Gladstone Yacht Club for stepping up and putting on extra live entertainment throughout the weekend to welcome our yachties in. I can tell you they had a great night, both Saturday and Sunday night, uh, with yachties um, celebrating well into the evening. Um, uh, line honours trophy for the, the multi-hole race went to uh, Rex at about four o'clock in the morning. Uh, that race started a bit earlier than the uh, 73rd Brisbane to Gladstone Yacht Race. And line honours there went to Maritimo. And of course, it would be remiss of me not to mention, for history's sake, that Wistari, our local yacht, won the Korea Mail Cup for the fifth time. Here, here. Congratulations to you, Scott, and your team. And Restless did very well as well. I think 10, it turned the top 10 for the Korea Mail Cup. And I'm not sure where they ended up in line honours, but to the Ibel family and everyone there as well done. Congratulations. This year, for the first time, we handed over a local beer. Every year we hand over a carton of beer and a medallion to welcome the yachts into the harbour this year. Yellow Patch Lager brewed at Auckland House. And thank you to my councillors for all getting involved in making sure we're part of that. Um, I know that some were rostered on a little bit later, thank you, Deputy, but um, it was not required because the yachts got in a little bit earlier than we expected. A bit of a strong wind, so... But you're rostered on, we just didn't get to your shift. So thank you very much for putting your hands up, though, and helping out. Um, our school holiday program is continuing throughout the holidays, so jump on Council's Facebook or website and check it out. This weekend is the Boyne Valley Country Music Camp Out, and again, another popular event has also sold out. However, you can still get day passes, so if you want to get involved in the Boyne Valley Country Music Camp Out, uh, make sure you do. I'm going to give a couple of shout-outs to some other people regarding uh, the, the Brisbane and Gladstone Yacht Race, to Luke Sinclair at the Central Queensland University for providing the facility at last minute. Uh, the presentation was obviously meant to happen at uh, the B2G village. The village didn't proceed. Uh, there wasn't any room at the Yacht Club for the trophy presentation for the, um, the, the 73rd Brisbane and Gladstone Yacht Race and they made their facility available um, to us. So thank you, Luke. And also to Lynn and Bruce Whelan who organise and are champions of the multi-hole race. Well done to you guys putting that event on. I know a, a re reduced, reduced number but to see Rex rock up at about four o'clock in the morning is pretty fantastic. And I've, I just want to put it out there. Maybe we need to start thinking about starting the race a little bit later, maybe two or three in the afternoon. <laughs> so we're not welcoming yachts in at two or three in the morning anymore. But that's something for you to think out. And that's something for you too, Karen Somerville, the race director of the 73rd Brisbane to Gladstone Yacht Race. To you and Michelle and, and Herb and the whole team at QCYC, well done. And to um, Top Moran and the Port Curtis Sailing Club. Easter and Gladstone went ahead and Easter and Gladstone will go ahead next year. Uh, bigger and better than it was and we'll look forward to seeing that event happen and no hopefully no more um pandemics to get in our road that's the mayor's statement councillors i'll move to the next item on the agenda which is the confirmation of the minutes for the 16th of march 2021 can i have a mover please move councillor churchill second and councillor hansen any business arising no business arising i put the motion all in favor motion is carried we have no deputations this morning uh, everyone obviously wanted to have their Easter super long weekend. Um, we'll move to the next item on the agenda, which is the officers of reports. And G4.1 is the Central Queensland Regional Organisation of Council's funding arrangements. And I'll hand over to the CEO. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as councillors are aware, um, CQ Rock has been legally constituted and has employed an executive officer who commences today. Um, and the organisation has um, developed a budget um, to fund the activities of the corporation um, up to the end of the next the next financial year. A funding formula has been developed which consists of a, a base rate and then a variable component based on population and operating budget and the figures are included in your report there. So this report is seeking council's endorsement of the funding model as agreed to by CQ Rock members and Mayor or Deputy Mayor may also wish to speak as delegates to CQ Rock. Oh, thanks, Madam CEO. No, I think the um, report's self-explanatory. This is about Central Queensland Councils working together for the best interests of all Central Queensland. And I can, I'm very happy to say that um, all mayors and councillors are working together very well. And that's only going to be good for Gladstone. It's only going to be good for CQ. 
Deputy? No, I think you've wrapped it up. Thank you. Thank you. Question, Councillor Churchill, then Councillor Hanson. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, it's probably more relevant, I suppose, not to say, and I totally support the, uh, yeah, the CEO's uh, recommendation. Uh, I was just wanting to know um, the name of the appointment of the executive officer, but more, more so, uh, where will they be? Where will they be based? It seems like a bit of history repeating itself here from a CQLGA perspective, but um, without going back into the past, just trying to determine where the executive officer will be located. Um, and appropriately, uh, is there any additional costs associated over and above this that will relate to the executive officer and or staff that may be appointed uh, going forward in the organisational structure? Thank you, Councillor Churchill. The executive officer that's been appointed is Sandra Hobbs, and councillors may be familiar with Sandra. She was the chief executive officer of Central Highlands Development Corporation for some 11 years and recently retired from that role. My, uh, no one from our council was involved in the recruitment process, but my understanding is that the um, successful candidate could be based in any of the locations where member councils existed, so we could offer support through, um, through offices and, and facilities that are required. It's a part-time position. Um, particularly initially and will, will involve some travel. So I can't confidently tell you exactly where um, Sandra will be based, but my understanding was it could be at any of the locations. The current chair um, and secretariat support is provided through Banana Shire Council, so obviously there's a high level of involvement there, but I'm um, happy to report back to Council once those arrangements have been confirmed. Thank you. Congratulations to Sandra. Thank you, Councillor Hanson. Yes, uh, Mr Mayor, I fully support uh, the officer's recommendation. This organisation has to be there, um, but it would be remiss of me if I didn't, uh, I, I hadn't, st I'd stated many, many times years ago when the CQ LGA uh, was disbanded and CQ Waste, more, more importantly, back in 2014, I stated then, and I would reiterate now, that uh, there has to be a clause put into the agreement, if there isn't one already, that this organisation be allowed to operate spanning over election cycles with no political interference. The lesson should have been learned from the last uh, resurrection of, uh, of, from the resurrection of CQ Rock. Uh, and now hopefully, in turn, CQ Waste is being redeveloped as well. So I don't know whether that's possible, but I think uh, if you could think about it and see that if you can get that type of uh, clause put into your agreement, Mr. Mayor, I'd be very happy. Ken advise that one um, particularly a notable difference with uh, since been incorporated this time is that majorities are uh, decisions are by majority, um, and that's the idea is that we work for the best of all of Central Queensland. And like I said before, all the mayors and deputy mayors that are on the on the um, on the board uh, certainly are doing that for the best. I've interest got no of doubt that they are, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, um, I don't know if that exact something like that clause is in there or not, but we can certainly raise it with the um, with the um, the chairman, uh, which is Nev Ferrier from Banana Shire. Councillor Muscat. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions in relation to the length of the commitment. So I don't have any issues with with the recommendation. I'm just a bit worried about the fact that it's only for, I, I guess it looks like a bit of a 12, 13 month length. So the person that's been employed only has a 12 month contract, I'm assuming. Is this sort of the best way in which we can, uh, I guess, you know, ensure that there's continuation and, and planning and, and the objectives will be actually achieved? I mean, I'm, I'm seeing this as something more of an ongoing situation. Are we committing just, just to one year or, or for more years? Or? Thank you, Councillor Muscat. The, the current commitment is to um, the, um, the end of the next financial year. Um, part of the requirements under the constitution of the corporation is to develop a strategic plan and identify strategic priorities. Um, as I said, the executive officer commencing today will be facilitating that process. So until those priorities are identified and the, the specific direction on what um, the company wants the exec officer to work on, it's hard to make a commitment um, for a, a future time, I guess. So I think that will be done 
fairly early on and then the financial commitments can be revisited. The intent was to, to get it up and running, get it started, get some progress and then um, come back with more maturity down the track. Um, I guess by agreeing to the recommendation today, if that's Council's will, it's agreeing to a funding model which is a proportional model based on the flat rate plus the population and operating revenue. So it, just to be, to be clear, it was my intent to seek Council's agreement to the model and then the specific amounts may change over time depending on the priorities of the group. Um, that will be reported regularly. Um, the next information session, there's a report on CQ Rock. So that will be, councils will be kept very much up to date and contribute to um, the priorities as they move forward. Thank you. Sorry, bear with me, um, councillors. I've just got to get my agenda working and like, socially distance with Kylie. <laughs> I'll put, um, any further questions? Did I have a mover and second already? Can I get a mover? Move Councillor Branthwaite, second to Councillor Trevor. I thank you, Councillor O'Grady online. Um, we'll put the motion all in favour. That's carried. Thank you. We'll move to the next item on the agenda, which is uh, to funding, uh, sorry, funding, development application, sorry, for material change of use, premises at a retirement facility, manufactured housing estate on lot 300 Ocalupa Circuit, and Councillor Trevor has already indicated he's leaving the room. Uh, and I hand over to the General Manager of Customer Experience, Rob Huth. Over to you, Rob. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and good morning, councillors. The purpose of this report is to assess development application 28-2020 from material change of use for a retirement facility comprising of 201 dwellings on the land at lot 300 Ocalupo Circuit, Agnes Water. The application has been assessed against the state planning policy of 2017 and our place, our plan, Gladstone Regional Council Planning Scheme version 2 under the Planning Act of 2016. The, propose, the proposal triggered impact assessment with the, within the emerging community zone and as a result public notification was required to be carried out by the applicant from the 25th of November to the 16th of December last year. During this period seven properly made submissions were received the relevant content raised by the submitters referenced points such as development density, on-site facilities and amenity of adjoining low-density residential and rural residential properties. Our office's recommendation is that development application 28-2020 for material change of use of land on lot 300 Ocalipo Circuit, Agnes Water be approved. The approval is supported by notice of reasons and subject to reasonable and relevant conditions as detailed within the report. And I have um, our manager for development services here to answer any detailed questions on the assessment. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Helen. Uh, questions, please, councillors. Councillor Branthwaite. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, morning, Helen and Rob. Um, there's, there's probably a, a lot of questions that have been raised, obviously, in the, in the, um, in the people that have written down and put um, submissions in and objections and so forth and and they've been they've been carried forward and answered or addressed in the in the in the um, report that we've got here the the um, development that was approved last year further along on a pretty big block how big was that and this is the same sort of same sort of um, development I presume Excuse me, there's two different uh, use types. So this one is a uh, specifically retirement living. The other um, application was a mobile home park. So it wasn't specific to retirement living. So two different uses as defined in the planning scheme. Okay. Um, obviously, with... Um, with the... It just, seem, just seems like they'll be in competition with each other and just wondering whether we've got two of the same, but obviously that they're, they're two different things. I sort of, I sort of struggle with that because I actually had the impression that the previous one was, was um, a retirement type of village as well because that they were trying to get obviously people to, to live there, you know, and um, so forth. The, oh look, I'll just, pay, I'll just reconstruct my thinking for another question shortly. I'll let someone else go. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Churchill. Yeah, thanks for that, Mayor Matt. Uh, I'm not opposed to the officer's recommendation. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to grapple with something in my own mind here at this stage that's probably of, of a larger scale. 
and not necessarily just relevant to the planning scheme, and, and, and it's good that we've received those submissions coming back. If this and the other development and, and other proposed developments go ahead down there, I'm, con I'm genuinely concerned about water and, and, and the availability of water, um, and, be it the capacity of the desalination plant or the availability of water. So have we done any forecasting in relation to, uh, not necessarily just, and I know we've got to deal with this development application today, and I'm not opposed to the officer's recommendation. There is a need for this. There's a need for it within the region. It'd be lovely to see it in, in the city, in Gladstone City as well. But now that said, have we done any forecasting or future planning in relation to the water and the sewerage needs for that area. In particular, I'm talking about water today, but when, and we're talking about our capacity to be able to provide the services that will be needed if and when these developments go ahead. Yeah, the local government infrastructure plan uh, guides the planning scheme in terms of the provision of infrastructure. So the zoning of the land and the capacity uh, to develop that land is incorporated within the planning scheme itself. And then again, on an individual basis, we look at um, the capacities at the present time. So if this development was to start tomorrow. So all of that work has been done. The LGIP informs the planning scheme, which gives us the zones and guides the right type of development in the right location. And then on an individual basis, each of these applications, we deal with our um, strategic asset performance team in terms of looking at capacities currently and how they can be delivered. So all of those checks have been done. Okay, so today I'm comforted by that. Thank you for that. Um, so today, effectively, you say if all these happen within the next 12 months, we'll have enough capacity for water and sewerage and services. Yeah, and the conditions um, in relation to each of those address that as well. So there's certain requirements um, on developers to do certain things as part of those conditions as well. Terrific. Thank you. Bring it on. Thank you, Councillor Goodluck. Um, Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Rob and Helen, and another really comprehensive report. And every question that I had was was answered um, in in the report. Uh, the submissions have all been answered. Um, so well done to the team. And I, I just I'd like to, I'm happy to move the officer's recommendation, Mr. Mayor. And I'd just like to say that this is good uh, to see. Uh, you know, we've 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 had a. A plan. We've identified that we need this type of development in the Gladstone region. It's great to see that proponents are coming here and, and uh, undertaking, making their applications and going through all these processes. And um, I look forward to seeing uh, this development take place. So thank you for the team's work. Thank you. Can I get a second? I thank you, Councillor Cameron, or are you wanting to talk? Oh, just a, a question to the uh, managers, please. The, the previous development. Um, that was staged over quite a few stages. Like on, on this site, the previous development approval. No, on no, site? I'm talking about the previous one that we approved. Okay, so that was on a, on the site to the east. Yeah, yeah, that was about 200 lots, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, it was a bit more than that, and yeah, it was a staged process. In both instances, they were staged. Yeah. From memory, it was about 16 stages. Was yeah, it was a lot. It, it was, was more a lot. Than so time. that 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 project could go over 30 years. Correct. It could it could take us some time. Yeah, yeah. right. There are some... This is staged over six. So one would imagine that would be between, say, 12 and 15 years? Yeah, it's hard to say. It's really up to the proponent and that's what they their level do. of comfort, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's not exactly rushed, is it? No. No. There's okay. a lot of work to, to come yet. No. Yep. And thank you for your report. Very comprehensive. Very thank easy you. to read. Thank you. Uh, were you. Was there a seconder for that motion? Thank, thank you, Councillor Cameron. Now back to Councillor Branthwaite. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, going back to my queries, <laughs> I've got tied up with before. Look, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not against the, the, the recommendation at all, don't get me wrong. I think it's the finer points in this that, that possibly need to be brought to light. My, my, my finer points is, is obviously the parking side of things for each individual house. Like each dwelling's got one park and then there's, 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 uh, there's 52 RV sites and there's also 63 visitor sites, but we're talking 200 units um, and once people, like in, in, in places that I've seen in the past, at various points around a certain village, there are parking for visitors rather than having to walk 
from one side of the complex to the other side of the complex. You know, if, if my dad was to visit someone in there, he'd have to go from park his car out there. And just wondering whether there's, um, there's, there's thought behind that. The other thing is I've noticed that in your conditions that you've actually put a topographical overlay on it. You'd like to see how that would look on the, with the lay of the land because it is built up the side of a hill. Um, and looking at the gradients and the, with the previous, the previous housing plan, there's certainly some steep gradients in there and, and then laying over those smaller blocks with that it would be really interesting to see exactly how that would actually flow as well. But I just wonder whether they, they probably appeal to the developer to possibly think about other parks scattered or salt and peppered through the, um, the actual estate itself. Um, um, the parking provision, the proposal has met the visitor parking provision and they're all within the site. So um, it's all contained within the development and they've met the minimum requirements as set by the planning scheme. So they've met their requirements for parking internally on the site. So, yeah. No, okay. Those internal it's roads won't be council roads, for example. It's all within the site. Right, okay. Okay. All right. I was just... I'd just think it's one of those things that possibly needs to be thought out by the developer, but it's up to them, I suppose. That's right. It really meets requirements that you know, I'm still learning all this, OK? <laughs> it's all good. Uh, any further questions, councillors? Sorry, just wanted to pick up, uh, Councillor Branthwaite said 300 sites. Is that the right figure? Or was it 360? No, 301. 301. 201. OK, thank you. My apologies. No, that's right. I was, no, the one, that's fine. I, I thought I read 360, but that was their previous application in 2018. Uh, no worries. We have a mover in Councillor Goodluck and a second in Councillor Cameron. Um, all in favour? Thank you, Councillors. Councillor O'Grady, I need to see how voted. Um, do I need to record that, Brooke? No, that's fine. Thank you. All in favour? Thank you. Motion's carried. We'll just wait for Councillor Trevor to get back in the room. Okay, welcome back Councillor Trevor. We move to the next item on the agenda which is G4.3, addition to add name to approve places, names, register and utilise on council asset Boyle. Over to you, Rob. Thank you Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to allow council co to consider a request to add Boyle to the approved place names register and utilise the name for an unnamed road off Boyle's Road in West Stowe. The officers have assessed the application and recommend that the council decline the application to name the unnamed road off Boyles Road because there is no current need to name the road for addressing purposes and the name Boyle is already a name used um, to name a road asset within the, area, in the same area within our region. Um, and with that I'm happy to take any, uh, any questions. Thank you Rob. Questions to the general manager please or a mover? No questions? Is this 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 um, lane or like road? It's uh, the unnamed road. Is it on private property? Is it in the public access or what? No, it's on a, a road um, reserve as such, but it's an unnamed road reserve. So it's not looked after by council at all. No, that's right. Thank you. Council, is anyone happy to move the officer's recommendation? Thank you, Councillor Hanson. Second, Councillor Branthwaite. Put the motion all in favour. Motion's carried. Next item on the agenda is G 4.4, application to add name to approved place names register and utilise on a council asset. John Morris. Back to you, Rob. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, the purpose of this report is to allow council to consider a request to, to add either a name John Morris or Morris to the approved place name register and utilise either to rename Radar Hill Park or the Reservoir Loop currently known as Gundoon Street. The officers have assessed the request and recommend that council approve the application to add John Morris to the approved na place names register for future use and decline the name Morris because the name Morris already has been used to name a road within our region and decline the application to rename Radar Hill P Park and Reservoir Loop currently known as Gundoon Street because the two assets already have names. And I'm happy to take any questions. No, thank you. That's fine. Councillors, any questions? 
A mover for the officer's recommendation, please. Thank you, Councillor Cameron. Seconded by Councillor Goodluck. All in favour? Motion's carried. We'll move to the next item on the agenda. Um, I believe Councillor Trevor has a conflict again. Thank you. Which is G4.5 Community Investment Program Regional Enhancement Fund Jump Start the City Heart. And I'll hand over to the General Manager of Community Development and Events, Kylie Lee. And thank you, Rob, for your previous reports. Very well done. Good morning, Mr. Mayor, Councillors, CEO. Um, this morning we have four community investment program reports um, to share with you. The first of those is the Jumpstart City Heart uh, funding stream. We've had one application to that particular stream for Gladstone Area Promotion Development Limited to um, host their Fashion Friday um, for a value of $2,000. This Fashion Friday event engages the local fashion retailers um, within Gundoon Street Precinct um, and runs off the success of their um, Sundowner Markets at 100 Gundoon Street and really activating that part of Gundoon Street itself. It's a low cost uh, funding, um, which I believe will present high value from an activation perspective for Gundoon Street. I have our community investment officer, Emily Costello, here with me as well for any questions. Thank you, Carly. Councillor Goodluck, question? No, I'm happy to move, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Move, Councillor Goodluck, seconded by Councillor Cameron. Any further discussion? Councillor O'Grady has a question. You're on mute, Councillor O'Grady. Sorry, can I just make an amendment to the date? The date's wrong for the 27th of May. It should be the 28th of May. Uh, yes, I just have to get that verification. That's right. Um, Emma. Checking, sorry. Thank you, Councillor, for picking that up. Um, mm -hmm. Councillor Goodluck had another question. We'll come back to that. Councillor Grady? No, no question. Sorry, Councillor Churchill had a question. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mayor Matt. Uh, this, this question is probably more, and I'm not opposed to the, uh, the the motion and the recommendation. It's probably a question to the CEO uh, through you, Mayor Matt, more than anything, is that we have enough uh, matters of delegation, and I notice in dot point two that we're authorising the CEO to delegate to do the grant and the funding and everything else. Just trying to, and it's wonderful that we hear these matters come before uh, the council chambers. Uh, but when you consider in the scheme of things, uh, it's it's $2,000, it'll be a wonderful community event, Fashion Friday, it'd be lovely. I'm trying to work out uh, at this particular stage why it is that it actually has to come to council for a motion, for a debate, for a recommendation, when appropriately we have a delegations register to the CEO that allows up to uh, mega hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, for for other types of projects and, and here we are making a decision in relation to the importance of $2,000. So it's probably through you, Mayor Matt, to the CEO. I'll get Lisa to answer that. <laughs> thank, thank you, Councillor Churchill. The policy that governs your community investment program is currently under review and that's one of the matters that Council might want to consider um, when you do um, have another look at that policy in terms of delegations. Traditionally, Council has wanted to have the decision-making power for um, the community funding programs, but it's always something that can be reviewed. So we're operating within the current policy. Thank you, um, Councillor. So, yeah. um, so just uh, I suppose as a segue from that, it's un currently under review, as as all our policies are um, are always regularly, annually uh, under review. Uh, what's your timeline for the review of this particular one? Just to clarify, Councillor Churchill, it's normally three years for policy, um, but this one was requested to be reviewed given the changes we had with the COVID programs that we introduced as well. So um, I know it's on um, Brooke's schedule as manager of governance. You might want to speak to the current time frame on that. Thanks, Brooke. So maybe perhaps uh, I can understand the, the importance of it coming to council under the community investment panel holistically, holistically, uh, meaning the lot when we make those specific budget allocations but then as a, I suppose, as part of the filtering down, then we're dealing with the, the, the minute ones that come along, um, not necessarily ad hoc, but 
you know, uh, with funds that are left over. Can we please consider that? It, we either deal with it holistically or, or not at all. That's my opinion anyway. Um, do you need, are you happy with that, with the CEO's response? I don't think we need any further clarification. Yeah, no, I'm prepared to accept that. The policy is under review. Thank you. And also part of that policy review might be that councillors might like to be um, included on the panels that make the decisions and if they're not coming back to the board. I was going to say that, uh, Mr Mayor. Over to you, um, Councillor Hanson. We've been there and done that. Um, we've reviewed this just not that far back. I don't know how, how many, probably two years, was it? Yeah, we before were, us. We were in yeah, Ambrose I'm, at the hall. I'm happy with the Ambrose. way it's running, so uh, I would not want to change it at all because um, I, was, I was wanting to change it a little bit more at some stage, but Council overall didn't favour it. Right, Councillor Goodluck, then Councillor Muscat. Thanks, Mr Mayor. I appreciate Councillor Churchill's points, but I, I personally like um, when these funding programs, this is our direct grassroots funding for community events that council has opportunities for community organisations to apply for funding. And by, by seeing this come back, uh, we always get a great report on, on uh, the quality of those applications and those events. And we get a, a, a direct oversight of where uh, ratepayers funding is going to contribute to these events and it also gives us the opportunity to then go and make sure we we're aware of these events and help promote them through our social networks etc um, so it's a it's a great uh, thing that I personally enjoy uh, seeing this that it's great to see all these not-for-profit community groups uh, putting in their applications getting support from the Gladstone Regional Council and putting on fantastic events across our region Thank you, Councillor Goodluck. Councillor Moscat. Thank you. I wanted to, I guess, uh, it's just a comment. And in relation to the amount of money that we allocate to different events after they request for assistance, I see that, uh, well, we have really great, we, we, we've been refining this over the last few months and years, I guess, but the way in which you present the, the, the assessments, which is great, you know, I have all of the information that I need there to make my decision. Now, what I now wonder is we start to see sometimes the same events coming up and they, you know, people put time, which is fair enough, like to, to write their applications. Now, what I, apart from the fact if I have attended the event, there isn't really that much visibility as to whether the numbers that they um, putting their applications have been hit, the outcomes have been achieved. Um, I know it's, I'm not asking you to bring it to a meeting, but there will be it will be quite interesting to say every so often to have some kind of visibility as to what whether the, those outcomes have been met by the applicants, and not not in a in a way to not in a criticism way or anything like that, but. We need to make sure that you know if we say if I'm telling you that I'm going to have a thousand people coming from Victoria. Well, I did have a thousand people coming from Victoria. Um, I, yeah, it is very easy to write things in applications, and then you know those things don't actually eventuate. The other thing is, um, it would be something that it would be wonderful if we can consider in in the policy next time or in the program. If we do, I know we do do multi-year funding at the moment with some of our events, but I think it's just a bit of more, the more of the bigger events. Mm -hmm. There could be also uh, an opportunity there and also not having to bring a thousand dollars every year mm -hmm. to the table here to, uh, to be approved. And it, it provides more continuity, more, there's no, yeah, security, that, mm -hmm. that sort of sense of, um, you know, we are being supported, not just now, and then start to worry about next year's event, see if we can do it or not. So that would be great. Um, they're really good points, Councillor Muscat. With respect to the last question, um, the multi-term agreements are still subject to budget approval. Mm -hmm. So whilst we do have a multi-term, um, they are definitely subject annually to um, our budget approvals. Mm -hmm. I'll let Emily talk around the first comment around acquittals, because um, she does collect a lot of great information in that process. Thank you. Um, so following each event that is funded through the Community Investment Program, an acquittal is required um, at all levels from community event right the way through. Generally speaking, um, 
events that have a significant monetary investment or in-kind investment are funded on a 90% initially with 10% held back subject to acquittal approval. And that is the when we look at the attendance numbers and ask those questions around what we predicted were your attendances were going to be, who actually came, what were the hurdles that you encountered. Um, it's something that it's an education process with the community groups as well. We find a number of them are, we're going back and forth a lot still um, to get really harvest that information from the acquittal that we're looking for. Um, I think moving forward, there would be an opportunity within the new CIP to possibly build in even an information session quor quarterly um, where we can discuss acquittal outcomes if that was to the appetite of council. Um, but for now, there is a quite rigid acquittal process that is required across the board. Um, yeah, and we have that 90-10% as for significant investments. Um, and we can definitely look at improving this process moving forward. Yeah, thank you. I mean, again, it was, as you said, it's not necessarily, a, it's not a punishment a situation or anything like that. It's just to make sure that we, when we make these decisions, these things come in every year, so, and some of those events come in every year, so have, have they done what they said they were going to do? And yes. we, I guess, don't always have that information. Thank you. Councillor Brentway. Thanks, Mr Mayor. I think just adding to the discussion, for years I was on their major events approval panel, otherwise known as MEEP, um, for probably five or six years. And the whole idea of providing event funding was to provide sustainability and, and to try and build sustainability into events so that they weren't putting their hand out all the time. And as, as time went by, some of these events were able to stand on their own two feet. There was also an element of seed funding in there too. And, and, and you know, I think for the likes of let's just say the Boyne Tanner hookup, I you know, was part of that for so many years and, and all of a sudden we had to put our hand out because the fact that the governor of the day changed, changed the long weekend and, and then all of a sudden everybody, not here or there or anywhere, but it didn't quite go as to what, what was the plan and to help that, that event back out again, funding was required. So the acquittal side of things from a major events approval panel that I was part of um, was quite stringent and we really worked hard and we obviously introduced Krista Horitz into that too with um, coaching and getting, getting, um, getting more people sort of more educated, more trained up and with better skills. So I think this program itself is, is, is excellent for our community events and excellent for upskilling and, and so forth. And, um, yeah, like even what we're looking at today is is um, it's it's pretty good. It's it's like seed funding, you know, having a a fashion Friday, and it's adding value to our community and and getting more visitation to the centre of the town. Thanks, doing a good good job. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Emily. Thank you, Kylie. No further questions. Um, was already have a mover and a seconder, so I'll put the motion now. All in favour? And Councillor O'Grady for this one, thank you. Uh, that motion is carried. If uh, Councillor Trevor could come back into the room, please, and I think Councillor Goodluck is out. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a wait for Councillor Trevor. Thank you, Councillor Trevor. The next item on the agenda is 4.6, which is Community Investment Program Community Celebration Fund Impact Events. And I'll hand back to the General Manager of Community Development and Events, Kylie Lee. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, the second of our four reports is around the Community Celebration Fund Impact Events. Now, Impact Events are for community events across our region that attract between 2,500 to 5,000 people. We've received three um, applications of three very popular events across our region, Under the Trees Music and Arts Festival, the Gladstone Ports Corporation um, new um, Port to Park Fund Run, which replaces the um, former Botanic to Bridge, and the Mount Larkham and District Show Society. Um, the recommendation here um, is as follows. So it's recommended to support um, the 
Under the Trees Music and Arts Festival with $24,000 cash and $1,000 in kind, $15,000 in kind for our GECC team to provide audio and visual support to the event and live streaming this year, which is very exciting, and $15,000 cash to the Mount Larkham District and Show Society. Um, all three events scored quite high with the panel, 83% um, for the Under the Trees Music and Arts Festival, 66% for the Ports to Park Fund Run and 78% for the Mount Larkham District Show Society. i um, happy to answer any questions and Emily of course is here to answer any specific questions on this particular item. Thank you councillors. Councillor uh, Councillor Muscat has a question? I don't have a question. But I wanted to say something, if I could. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, just um, looking at these, looking at these three events, I don't know. It just shows you kind of a little bit of what happens in our region, and how different it is. And yeah, it's it's just great. Um, yeah, I'll, I guess it's um, and the, it's great to see that they've obviously we were able to give them the amount of money that they wanted. And uh, yeah, well, I look forward to seeing them. It's just, uh, I, I thought by looking at this, it was just a great representation of the diversity of events that we have. So, thank you. And these are some of those ones that we could look at multi year funding. Mr. Mayor, Mayor uh, I'm, I'm keen to move the motion, but uh, at the same time, uh, I just wonder how, and it goes back to what Councillor Brentwaite was talking about there in the previous uh, resolution. It would be great if these uh, types of events could also attract major funding from state. I mean, these are signature, these are signature events for our region. Uh, and, and perhaps they are working on that. Emily, you might be able to tell us on that. But, you know, wouldn't it be great to see the, the Queensland Government, uh, and they may already be doing that through Tourism Events Queensland, acknowledging, uh, you know, especially uh, these and a, and a few others becoming those major destination signature events. I can talk a little bit to that one, Councillor Churchill, just so um, councillors and the community can understand the level of contribution to the overall event budget. So the um, Under the Trees Music Festival, the, the $25,000 combined investment we make is only 14 percent of the contribution of the total event cost. Um, Port to Park is 10 percent and the show is 82 percent. Yep. Just on the 82 percent, sorry, just to clear that up, councillors, that 82 percent is the cost of the um, activation, the marquee and the children's side of the show um, in the applicant the applicant in their application just put in the total cost of the um, children's area at the show, which is why it comes in at 80 odd percent for that one. Uh, Councillor Brent, my question? No, actually, I'm pretty sure that TEQ do support the, um, I think, under the trees, do they not? Yeah, they have they've received some funding in the past. So, and I agree with you, Councillor Churchill. I, the likes of the, these three events could be absolute signature events for our region. Really, really could be. It's uh, the fabulous, the three fabulous events. Thank you. Before Councillor Churchill's happy to move. Before we do our question, have they got the route for the Port to Park announced yet? I don't think it's specifically been announced to community as yet. Um, we have um, some information about the proposed route, but not yet released. I don't believe. Let's leave that up to the port to do that. <laughs> we better not do that no. then. But that's a fantastic event, Botanic to Bridge, and I'm sure Port to Park will be great too. Uh, so moved by Councillor Churchill and seconded by Councillor Branthwaite. Uh, no further questions? No? No further questions? I put the motion all in favour. Uh, Councillor Grady, thank you. You got carried. Um, we'll get Councillor Goodlock back in the room. Uh, judging by the amount that run fun run the other day at Easter, Good Friday, there was a power power a lot of people there. This will be supported again. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Good luck. Um, the next item on the agenda is 4.7, which is Community Investment Program Community Celebration Fund Destination Event. And back to you, Kylie. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So our Community Celebration Fund destination events um, support our larger events that attract over 5,000 people to our region. Um, I'm really excited about the event that we have um, in front of us to consider today, which is an event that's hosted by Gadajal Development Corporation, and it's their 1770 Cultural Immersion Festival. This event was born from the Cook 250 um, anniversary last year and was very successfully held in the 1770 area last year, um, attracting people from across our re region and beyond. Um, the request was for funding for $50,000. We've supported this for $35,000 uh, for this specific event, um, leaving a balance in our um, entire destination fund of about $11,667. I invite any questions from councillors on the event. Thank you, Kylie. Questions, councillors? Councillor Hanson, happy to move? Happy to move. You move, Councillor Hanson. Seconded, Councillor Branthwaite. Thank you, Councillor O'Grady, as well. Actually, I'm, uh, I'll take Councillor O'Grady, please, because she <laughs> I keep missing her hand up there on the um, Teams meeting. So move, Councillor Hanson, seconded, Councillor O'Grady. No further questions. I put the motion. All in favour? Motion's carried. Thank you. And we'll move to the next item on the agenda, which uh, we're looking at splitting, councillors. We agreed to split this. So I'll just go through that first. I might hand back to you, Kylie, but we'll um, not discuss the one which Councillor... Churchill had a conflict in. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The item that you're talking about, Mr. Mayor, is number four down. Integrate, I believe, Councillor Churchill. Yes. Um, is that the only particular? Yeah, that's the only conflict Great. there. Um, it's really exciting to see um, the amount of community events we're um, receiving in the Ignite events. These are our smaller events across the region. And likewise, really exciting to see the dispersion of these events across our entire region. We've had 16, um, event, 16 applications um, that have requested funding for this particular um, investment stream. Um, given the amount of funding left in our Ignite stream, um, we, we actually have expended um, the amounts from this funding stream. To give you a little bit of clarity around that, our COVID um, pandemic did impact on this one where a lot of community organisations had requested funding later on in the year with postponed events. So some of these particular events um, would have fallen in separate financial years. However, due to the COVID pandemic, we have, fun we have requested funding in the same financial year. Hence why our budget is a little more impacted than usual. Um, you'll see um, the balance of remaining funds if we were to fund all of these events was around um, negative 25,000. The request that we have um, today, we've looked at all of our funds and the best way to disperse these funds, um, being able to fund as many as we possibly can. The formula that we've applied in this particular case is to fund half of the amount of funding for any of our, um, any of our applications that score over the 65% mark. Any under, we have um, proposed one third funding. Um, there are two um, particular um, applications that unfortunately we didn't fund and the reasons around that was either non-compliance with the guidelines um, or commercial profit. I invite any questions. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. Sorry, Kylie. Councillor, good luck. Uh, I'm happy to move recommendation, Mr Mayor. Thank you. I have a question, but I'll get a seconder for the motion first, please. Seconder, please, Councillor Hanson. And Councillor Muscat has a question. Yeah, it's just you said two that we couldn't fund. So I could, I'm only seeing Glad's Netball Association. Mm -hmm. It's just one. Oh, sorry, Emily. Yeah. Uh, there is there is two, Councillor um, Muscat. The second one is CrossFit Gladstone, the CQ Classic. Um, entry fees are um, paid for this particular competition with the profits, um, which are quite considerable, being invested back into the business, which is great, but just shows that it doesn't rely on community funding. Okay. Sorry, and this is the one that is... This is on the community one. Correct. The, so, yeah, just checking. This is Ignite. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No further questions? 
Um, I had a mover and a second already, so I'll put the motion all in favour. Motion's carried. Thank you, Councillor Grady. Uh, we'll move to the next item on the agenda. Oh, which, sorry, is Councillor Churchill has a conflict. And the next, oh, sorry, um, Emily, we still need you. Um, we split this event, this one. Happy to move. I'll wait till Councillor Churchill's out the room before we do move that, but I can take that. We split 4.6. Just for clarification, Mr Mayor, for the minutes, is that um, line number four of the recommendation was removed from that previous resolution? Sorry, just clarifying for the minutes that number line number four into Great Queensland was removed from that previous resolution and that this resolution will solely be for that project for into Great Queensland as Councillor Churchill have a conflict. Yes, and Thank we you. will um, itemise them separately in the minutes. Thank you. Um, sorry, so you're happy to move, Councillor Goodluck. Um, seconder, please. Second, and Councillor Cameron, or O'Grady. Keep missing you, Desley. Sorry. Um, any further discussion on this one line item? No. I put the motion all in favour. Motion is carried. Thank you, Councillor O'Grady. Um, can we have Councillor Churchill back? And thank you, Emily. Thank you, Kylie. Thank you, Councillor Churchill. We'll move to the next item on the agenda, which is G4.9. Oh, oops, Siri wants to talk to me as well. Um, uh, next item on the agenda is 4.9, uh, Youth Council Advisory Committee, and back to you, Kylie. Thank you, Mr Mayor. This is another exciting report to bring to Council this morning. Um, this is the um, Advisory Committee, the Youth Council Advisory Committee for 2021. Um, we've had some fantastic applications from 10 um, young community members across our region. Um, and if, if I can be afforded the time, I'll just, um, ex just announce um, the recommended appointments, if that's okay. Um, Aaron Ye, Alexa Marks Markson, Brooke Asman, Charlize Falconer, Layla Dow, Ramil Malig, Stella Porter, Taylor Cubis, William Patrick and Gypsy Cantwell have been nominated to form the Youth Council for 2021. The 10th um, applicant um, withdrew um, based on management of his academic studies and extra curriculum um, activities. Um, which was a shame, but um, perhaps he can come through in, in later, later councils. Um, the Youth Council this year will be um, looking after a few activities, um, not limited to, but including a governance workshop around formal meeting structure, so providing that education on how councils and local authorities and state governments, etc., et work, chairing the Mayor's Youth Breakfast, participating in the Youth Ally Pro pilot program against domestic and family violence, as well as consultation and involvement in future youth weeks, volunteers week, senior week and mental health week. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing um, how our youth council perform and very excitingly, we do have um, a very nice varied representation across the region again, with our members located in Agnes, Gladstone, Calliope, Brewer, Tenham Sands and Boyne Island. I invite any questions. Thank you, that's fantastic. Um, we were supposed to do the official welcome of the Youth Council last week, but unfortunately the COVID issues to postpone that, so I'm hoping we've rescheduled and look forward to um, congratulating the members of the Youth Council individually. Questions, councillors? Councillor Muscat? Uh, hello, uh, thank you. I, it's just that um, I've, I know the, the events that you, you described as the Youth Council taking part of, I was just also wondering um, if there's also more opportunities to have them involved in maybe not necessarily everything to do with youth, but with the mainstream council activities. You know, I know a lot of things we do, but I, one of the things that we want to do with the young people that, putting the, that are putting their hands up for being in the youth council is to get them you know, a bit of a, a real taste of what it is to be in council as well. So, you know, maybe something like, you know, we could utilise them to open some of our events or to come to some of, not, not maybe on their own, but, you know, with, with ourselves as well. 
And I think we have also in the past discussed the option of attaching some kind of budget to some of their activities. So I, I guess it's just part of the the progression of this of this activity, the the youth council activity. So if we can maybe consider in the future adding some of them, having them jump on board with some of the things that we do, that would be wonderful for their their development. And I mean, obviously ourselves too. We we don't apart from just some. It, formal meet and greet, we don't really see, get to see them that often. And I, I love to see them more. And yet the budget allocation will be wonderful too. Thank you, Councillor Muscat. Thank you, Councillor Muscat. The councillors um, are rostered to attend every youth council meeting. I know sometimes our diary doesn't permit, but I know they, they miss us when we're not there. So we certainly make every effort to attend their meetings as well um, where we can. So I believe Councillor O'Grady is happy to move this. Is there a seconder, please? Take a second to Councillor Moscat. Any further questions? No, put the motion all in favour. The motion is carried and congratulations to our youth, youth council members. Um, we'll keep going for a little bit longer, councillors, and we'll break for morning tea. The next item on the agenda is, thank you, Kylie, by the way, is G4.10, which is EOI pump station efficiency. And I hand over to the general manager of operations, John Tumbers, and supported by the manager of contracts and procurement, Christy Wapner. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and good morning, councillors. Um, this report seeks a resolution to ask for expressions of interest for an expert company to analyse and provide recommendations for better and uh, more efficient operation of council's water and sewage networks. The reasons for the expression of interest is that um, we may not know as an organisation what's out there in terms of options and technologies to conduct this kind of study. Um, and we would actually like to discover uh, these options as part of the EOI before we go to a formal tender. Um, there's no direct cost in accepting an EOI or other than the officer's time in preparing and analysing the submissions. And I think we have Niels Kloppers online if you have any questions in terms of um, the te technical aspect of what we're asking for here. So I'm open for questions. Thanks, John. Questions, councillors? Seems a straightforward one to me. You moving, Councillor Goodluck? Yeah, I'd just like to say it's great to see um, that we're taking this approach to John and the team and, and, you know, trying to be innovative and making sure we're aware of what technology and what processes are out there that we might not understand or we might not be fully um, aware of. And uh, this is one of the many ways that we try and add value uh, to our ratepayers across the region. But I'm happy to move that. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Goodluck. Seconded, Councillor Cameron. Any further discussion? No, I'll put the motion all in favour. Motion is carried. Thank you, Desley. Yep. And um, we'll move to the next item on the agenda, which is G4.11. Councillor Trevor has a conflict of interest. We'll leave the room, which is the supply and delivery of filters. Um, when Councillor Trevor leaves the room, I'll hand back to you, John. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This report seeks to enter into a preferred supplier agreement with GPC Asia Pacific, trading as Repco. It's for the supply of vehicle and heavy machinery filters. Um, the, the PSA is required to support um, the in-source servicing and maintenance of Council's fleet. Uh, Council went to tender and received five conforming submissions. The submission from Repco scored the highest in the evaluation process. Uh, an interesting, interesting stat here is Council spends around $920,000 per year on machinery filters. I'm um, open for questions. Move Councillor Churchill, seconded by Councillor Hanson. Uh, before I put the motion, uh, regards to the other tenderers, they're all... So we're only going with Rep, Repco? Is that right? We can at least get our filters from. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We currently have no contract for the supplier filters. Uh, I think we've been sourcing them from a, a several suppliers uh, in recent months. Um, the incumbent uh, for filter supply is Maxi Parts. Um, that was added when the previous filter contract expired, uh, which was with Repco. All right. Thank you. All right, councillors, we're going to move around a seconder. Any further questions? Put the motion all in favour. Motion is 
Carried, thank you. I'll ask Councillor Trevor to return to the room, please. Thank you, Councillor Trevor. The next item on the agenda is G4.12, which is Mechanical Ventilation Services and Maintenance. Back to you, John. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. This report seeks to enter into a service provider agreement with AC Air for service and maintenance of ventilation systems. Now, this includes um, air conditioning, fan units, ice machines, ventilation ducts and, and more, which is listed in the report. Uh, Council went to tender and received four conforming submissions the submission from ACA scored the highest of that group. Council spends around $240,000 per year on this type of service, and we're open for questions. Questions, councillors, or a mover for the officer's recommendation? Councillor Goodluck. Mr Mayor, from memory, this was a local contractor that we supported through the last uh, tender, and it's great to see that they've come back now and, and uh, and they've made it to the top of that assessment panel. So it's, a, it's another example of uh, great support for local contractors, but I'm very happy to move that. Thank you. Here, here. Seconded by Councillor Branthwaite. Any further discussion? Put the motion. All in favour? Motion's carried unanimously. Thank you. We'll move to the next item on the agenda, which is the tender for Captain Cook Drive resurfacing. Back to you, John. Thank you, Mr Mayor. This report seeks to enter into a contract with Fulton Hogan Industries for the resurfacing works on Captain Cook Drive between Agnes Water and 1770. An outline of the scope of these works is contained in the report. Um, the work is a works for Queensland funded project. Uh, Council went to tender with three conforming submissions. The submission from Fulton Hogan scored the highest in the tenure evaluations. The offer from Fulton Hogan is $914,452 and fully funded by the Works for Queensland funding. Uh, I'm open for questions. Thank you, John. Any questions, councillors? Got a mover for the officer's recommendation. Move Councillor Churchill, seconded Councillor Cameron. Thank you, Councillor O'Grady. All in favour? The motion is carried. Um, the last item on the, the ordinary agenda is item G4.14 which is biosecurity, surveillance, uh, winter. Over to the General Manager of Customer Experience, Rob Huth. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Christy. I have a mover for the officer's recommendation. Question, Councillor Churchill. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, quite comprehensive. I suppose it's more an operational question than anything because trying to understand, and whilst a lot of them are, are the various um, plants that we deal with, it's the animal area, and when we mention the tilapia, I'm just trying to get an understanding, uh, do you know uh, in your capacity, Rob, um, what it is that we actually do to minimise, control, perhaps eliminate uh, tilapia? Yeah, I'm sorry, Councillor Churchill, I don't necessarily have that information available with me today, but I can certainly yarn, take it on notice and get back to you with it. Yeah, if you don't mind. I mean, in hindsight, I probably should have flicked you an email last night as such, but, you know, I, I think it's been a concern, but in recent times and with the movement of flood water becomes a more growing concern, if that's the right word. So perhaps we could, perhaps we could come back to that at a later time uh, because... We've seen areas in other areas of Australia that have done exceptionally well to be able to minimise the, uh, the, the, the devastation that it causes. Um, and then we don't want to actually be the recipient of being the wrong model for control of tilapia. But I'm only just raising it. I know it's an operational issue, but I'd love to know. Yep, and I'm sure, I'm sure my colleagues around the table would like to know if it becomes a... Well, it is becoming a growing issue, that's all. Most certainly I'll get the information back to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a question. Thank you, Councillor O'Grady. Um, Rob, I was just wondering, how do we add feather top roads grass to this list? Because we've had so, um, farmers actually, and we've met with farmers, have um, are having serious problems with the feather top roads grass. So I was just wondering, how do we add that to this list? 
Yeah, thanks, uh, Councillor O'Grady. I can certainly take that up with the team and just see where that sits within um, the priority of the, of the infestations and the weeds that we're managing in this space. So we can certainly take that up um, and, and again, I'll bring that information back to you. Right, yeah, I know it's not on the um, priority list at the moment, but um, it's becoming um, more of a problem, I believe. Is there specific areas within our region that's a problem more so than the others? Um, yes, there are, which is on the western side where they've done the gas line. Okay, thank you. As a branch, mate. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just, the likes of Lacani or Lacinia, or I don't know what how they pronounce it, obviously a cattle feed, but it's becoming a, a, a more of an issue. I'm, I'm saying this because of the people that are actually watching online, that because people have made lots of rep representations or, you know, phone calls and emails with me uh, regarding this. It's along the railway line opposite netball courts there. It's, um, it's in the creek that's, um, uh, as soon as you turn off into um, um, Landing Road, the creek that's there, it's all the way through those creeks. You know, is there any anything on the horizon with that? I, you know, I noticed that a lot of people, obviously cattle growers are using it as, as, a, as a controlled cattle feed, but it is getting out of hand and it is, it's not a native here. Yeah, it's most certainly um, something that the team is working on and we are actively spraying in those areas, but you, you're right, it's, it's quite um, prevalent throughout the area at the moment. So yeah, it's something the team is working on and, and we'll continue to work on to try and maintain that, um, that species. Thank you so much. Councillor Chatchell. I'd just like to make a comment, if you wouldn't mind, Mayor Matt. It, would, it was remiss of me because I do remember going back uh, when we were talking about uh, the, the issue of, um, I suppose, biosecurity and uh, some of these weed outbreaks that I was uh, reasonably or uh, constructively critical of the Queensland Government, uh, in particular to a couple of patches within the Gladstone region. So it would be remiss of me to say it was wonderful to hear that the Queensland Government uh, in their budget allocations has stepped up to the mark and I believe that they've also increased the budget allocation for uh, biosecurity. So I say that um, and, and, with, and, and with the spirit of the cooperation it was pleasing to know that they are actually making, making the Queensland Government is making an increased commitment to, to biosecurity and the eradication. Thanks Councillor Churchill. Is there a mover for the officer's recommendation? Thank you, Councillor Goodluck, second and Councillor Brentwaite. Put the motion all in favour. Motion is carried. All right, we'll move to the next item on the agenda, which is Councillor's reports, and I believe Councillor Churchill has one to add. For. It, was only a, it was only a brief one, Mayor Matt, that uh, I had the opportunity to uh, represent the Gladstone Regional Council, or represent you in your uh, best interests uh, at a e executive community uh, gathering in Rockhampton with the Queensland Police Commissioner Katarina Carroll and members of her uh, senior executive. Um, so in brief uh, from private and uh, the public discussions uh, that the Commissioner was appropriately uh, strong in her words of the importance of partnerships and the partnership with uh, the Gladstone Regional Council or more so partnership with, uh, with local government and that vital partnership was all encompassing everything from, you know, COVID to disasters to um, uh, to road developments, and the list goes on. So um, it was just a an opportunity more than anything to fly the flag. And thank you for the opportunity, and uh, and the commissioner, uh, in her capacity, does pass on best wishes. And there was another small personal matter, if you'd allow me the liberty that our local branch of the Queensland Retired Police Association has been has been on about, has been uh, the police on a roll for those who have suffered from PTSD. And, uh, and, I, and I share this with you uh, today that the Commissioner did indicate that there, and because we have lost some police officers in the, the Gladstone region, sadly, uh, one would remember uh, the officer in charge of Miriam Vale on harms. Uh, so this was more about recognition from uh, the impact of, uh, of PTSD and other associated aspects. And the commissioner was rightfully uh, forthcoming to say that they would review the policy 
in relation to the honours for Queensland Police uh, Service Officers. And um, I think it's been through 27 uh, iterations from what uh, Commissioner Katarina Carroll had indicated. So, but uh, did share with me that that policy will probably be made public sometime in the next three to four weeks. But thank you for the opportunity and, um, and it was good to fly the, the Gladstone Regional Council flag next to the, the new Mayor of Rockhampton Regional Council, Tony Williams. Thanks, Councillor Churchill. Councillor Hanson. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I didn't have a chance to get this report into the last meeting, but just a brief uh, summary today, and I've given you all a report via email, uh, councillors and the executive team, uh, regarding the LawMac Waste Forum and meeting we held here in the Entertainment Centre on the 18th and 19th of March. And uh, can I just please uh, pass my appreciation and that of all councillors to uh, uh, from the LawMac Committee uh, regarding the forum that was completed here. Uh, everything was presented perfectly to the group, venue, food, harbour crews. Special thanks to Cathy Walker, operations uh, under John, and John Tumbers and Nathan Winter, and the whole of the waste group for the organisation of the event. Also thanks to Celicia Faulkner, management, manager of asset planning, for her presentation at the event. And of course, the GECC team need to be applauded as they were perfect hosts for this event. Favourable comments were received from all delegates I spoke to as to the way the event was conducted, and many were surprised at the vibrancy of the city. All very positive. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hanson. That's certainly good news. Is there um, any other councillor reports? Excuse me, Mr Mayor. Over to you, Councillor Grady. Yep. I'd just like to thank you for all the work that you did over um, organising the Brisbane to Gladstone Yacht Race and keeping everybody informed. You've done a brilliant job. And the feedback has just been astonishing, actually, because they said, oh, my gosh, your mayor's everywhere. So, so congratulations on the work you've done on that. Thanks, Councillor Grady. I love Easter in Gladstone, and I think you <laughs> pretty sure everyone knows I love the yacht race as well, and pretty special when we're starry winds. Oh, that was so good. Yeah, and the oh, Easter Bunny, yes. Um, I did have a chat with the Easter Bunny. A highlight of my life. Thank you, Carly, for organising that. Um, councillors, I think there's no more urgent business. There's no notice of motion and there's no confidential items that I'm aware of. Excellent. Thank you. In that case, I'll declare the meeting closed at 10.28am. Thank you for your attendance.